Hello Demon Slayer friends and welcome to Anime Universe. In this video we're going to talk about lots of interesting facts about one of the most popular villains in the entire history of anime and also my favorite Duma. So if you're ready grab your meeting blades and let's start our video about facts that you must know about Duma from his childhood till his death. As you see we're going to cover 8 interesting parts in this video so let's not waste any time and head into the video right now. If you want to know the real reason why he is such a psycho and badass, you should completely discover his past. After that, you may even give him the right to be like that. So let's start with his childhood. If you're a manga reader, then you know that he was born in a royal family, and his father was the head of eternal paradise cult, and after his birth, because of his beautiful rainbow colored eyes and pure white hair, his father made him the boss of his cult instead of him. Because he believed that his son is a supernatural being since he is gifted with such great eyes and hair colors. But do you know what is funny? The way his parents described him. Can you even believe that they called Duma innocence? Yeah, sure, he's the second innocent person in the world right after Hitler. And the second sarcastic thing that they said about Duma was he can hear the voice of the god. I mean that dude was completely denying the existence of the god a little after he grown. He even have a famous quote about this. Gods don't exist and Buddhas don't either. Yet these people lived for decades without realizing it. Once they die, it's all just gonna return to nothing. They won't feel anything and then they rot into the ground. As long as you live on this earth, that's your eternal fate. They just can't accept this simple fact. It must be so hard being stupid. I want to make these sorrowful people happy. I want to help them. That's the reason I was born after all. But let's find the reason why he is such a psycho. Actually, I think the way that he acts and the thing that he does will be so normal if you know what he had been gone through in his life. He was just a little boy and all of his cult members were asking him for advice. Come on! He's just a little crying baby. He was a little boy and he saw his mother stabbed and killed his dad because he found out that he had cheated on her many times. And right after that, he poisoned herself and committed suicide. I'm pretty sure back then there was no therapist to help him to fight his huge mental traumas. So I think it's not actually unnormal to see him acting the way he does now. So after all of these crazy things that he had gone through, let's see why and how did he became a demon. To be honest, after all these mental breakdowns that we discussed about in the first part, Duma was kinda a demon even before he met Muzan. He didn't care about others and their feelings and also the life of other people didn't have any meanings to him. But to be more accurate, his transformation into real demon happened when he met Muzan at the age of 20. Although he's not the biggest demon, but as all of the boys wants to hear, actually, the size doesn't matter. Just look at this big and huge demon which looked so strong in the beginning, but he was so powerless even against Tanju in his biggest form through the story. Duma is a powerful muscular being with rainbow color eyes and pale white hair. Though some colored panels depict his hair as blood, he reached to the upper moon 2 stage and the world number 2 is written in both of his eyes. But the interesting part of his story begins right after his transformation, so let's check his journey after he turns into a demon. We all saw when a demon is created, how does it look at first? So I think it's safe to say right after his transformation, he was on the basic and first level of demons and he was not an exception. But due to his ambitious and also his huge desire for women, he could eat lots of women and become stronger so fast. It's stated that demons get stronger with eating each human. And also Duma mentioned that eating women give you more power than eating a man. 
He said women are more nutritious because they have the ability to feed a baby to grow. And also I think he proved this fact in reality. I mean just compare him to Akaza. Akaza turned into a demon so much sooner but he always refused to eat a woman. He was even a master of martial arts and before he became a demon he fought and killed 67 members of a dojo who killed his master and his wife with his own bare hands at the same time. So we can understand that he was so strong and also a talented fighter. On the other hand Duma mainly ate women and despite becoming demon and so much after Akaza, he increased his power so fast. He first reached the Upper Moon number 6 title. Actually, it's kind of interesting fact that when he met Yutaro and Ducky, he was Upper Moon number 6. And after a huge time skip, these two brother and sister reached the Upper Moon number 6 title too. So due to the fact that we saw how strong Yutaro was, we can understand that Uma is not a joke holding the title of Upper Moon number 2. I'm pretty sure now you're wondering about his powers. So stay with me and let's dive into your answers right now. Duma's powers are actually limitless. He's got physical power and also powerful blood demon art techniques. But let's start with his physical stats. Among all of Hashira members, we know that Shinobu, the insect Hashira, is the fastest. But when she went up against Duma, she couldn't do so much. Although she stabbed Duma in the eye in her first move, but after that Duma gets serious and easily surpassed her speed with his crazy supersonic speed. Which reminds me to the time when Rengoku gets serious against this super fast bastard and beheaded him in seconds. And after that he easily handled Shinobu and finally killed her without getting any serious injuries and absorbed her in seconds. I know what happened to him after that so stop booing me in the comments about that. I'll cover that part in the end of the video. But for now we're talking about Duma's powers compared to the others and the truth is he's even faster than the fastest Hashira. But his speed is not the craziest thing about him. Duma was a total boss when it came to the regenerating his body. Like in the first episode of season 3 of anime, Akaza punched off his upper head and lower jaw. But Duma just threw them back without breaking a sweat. He even thought it was a friendly gesture or something. It just goes to show how tough he was. And did this. He once absorbed Chinu's body and swallowed over 37 kilograms of poison. That's like 70 times more than what would normally kill a demon. But it still took a long time before it started messing with him. Pretty crazy, right? Also, I mentioned right now he absorbed Shinobu's body. Yeah, despite other demons, he didn't even need to eat people. He got an ability called Biological Absorption, which allows him to completely absorb and devour the entire body of a human without eating them within only a few seconds. Meanwhile, because I like Duma so much, I'm trying to absorb some subscribers to my channel to grow more and be strong. So I'd be so thankful if you just press the subscribe button and help me to reach the same level as Duma. Now let's talk about his blood demon arts. Really I don't think there's a demon with more variation of blood demon arts than Duma. Each demon we saw in this series had the maximum of 2 or 3 different blood demon art techniques. But Duma is on a whole other level. His main ability and blood demon art which is extremely powerful is called cryokinesis. He can create ice and frost from his own flesh and blood and make it pop up anywhere he wants. And get this, he's also a total master at manipulating the ice, which lets him to unleash some seriously potent ice techniques. Oh, and did I mention that he can create a special kind of demonic powdered ice that's legal to anyone who inhales it? Expect for Duma of course, you can cause necrosis and take away your ability to fight in no time flat. Pretty crazy stuff right? 
Now let's discover all of his blood demon art techniques. Dumas got some seriously cold blood demon art up his sleeve. Check out the snowfall in a built-in garden. A series of fan tanks that create razor sharp ice shards to slice enemies to pieces. Or how about the frozen clouds, in which Duma creates a large wave of cold wind and uses his fans to scatter them. This technique nearly froze Kano's eyeballs. For his third technique, we have the Lotus Eyes, in which Duma delivers a forward fan slash that creates razor sharp ice shards along with several ice lotuses. And in a kind of same technique, we have the Vine Lotus. Duma creates several lotuses made of ice and long frost vines that extend his reach and can capture or slice up his opponents. To use scattering lotuses, Duma swings his fans and creates a blizzard of long-range razor-sharp ice shards shaped like lotus petals. He can also attack you from the sky with winter icicles that makes him capable of spawning numerous icicles to impel his target from the buff. Don't forget White Blizzard Princesses, two female humanoid ice figures that blow cold wind with a wider range than frozen clouds. The wind generated was cold enough to instantly freeze the surrounding wood bridge and water. Kano noted that this technique is extremely broad and has a long reach. He can even create miniature ice clones of himself with the Crystal Miko technique. These clones are capable of using all of his bottom art and have the same amount of power and strength as Duma. And last but not least, his ultimate blood demon art, Cold Frost Lily Body Sabot, which I think Demon Slayer creators kinda copy from Hunter x Hunter anime. If you watch this great anime, you know that Netero Hunter's big boss had a super strong ability just like Duma's ultimate blood demon art. But let's not get distracted. This is Duma's strongest and last dish technique. He creates a large body Sava ice statue to attack and destroy all of his targets. Not only it can deal a huge amount of physical damage due to its sheer size and weight, but is extremely durable, being able to withstand multiple attacks from Kano and Inosuke with little to no damage. Now let's get to the part which I believe is going to be the shortest section of this entire video. As we all know, Duma is really annoying and a pain in the ass. So you might be surprised to hear that he's got some friends and allies on his side. Especially after we saw the first episode of season 3 that no one wanted to work him on a mission. But to think of it deeply, there is a person who owes him so much and it's safe to call him an ally for Duma. Of course we're talking about Yutaro, he and also his beloved sister were going to die in just few minutes. But Duma not only saved both of them from certain death, but also gave Yutaro the power to protect his sister. So it's not a surprise that Yutaro would be his friend and ally, but sadly <laughs> For Duma after the entertainment district art, his only loyal friend Yutaro was defeated and punished by death after one of the greatest fights in the entire history of anime that we saw till now. Discussing about his friends in it so fast, but now we're going to cover a part which is not going to end anytime soon due to his annoying personality. He made enemies for himself absolutely everywhere. He's got enemies among Demon Slayers, Hashiro members and even demons. I don't even know where to start. Just look at all these outraged faces. All of them are this angry just by seeing Duma. So let's start with Shinobu. In the first season of anime, Tanjiro mentioned that Shinobu is always angry. She confirmed this fact and told him after she saw her sister's death, she's always outraged. She was surprised when Tanjiro could recognize her feelings because she's always trying to cover her feelings. And I guess now it's obvious that who is responsible for Shinobu's anger. Duma killed Shinobu's sister, the flower Hashira Kanae Kocho, but the story doesn't end there. 
Just look at Kanao's face. Do you know why she's this much angry? After Shinobu faced Kuma, he easily killed and absorbed her body just in few seconds and Kano saw all of these scenes. She lost her master in front of her eyes and couldn't do anything to save her. We're going to cover complete story in the last section of this video but for now, you know the reason why Kano is this much angry. But what about Akaza? Both of them are demons, so why he hates Duma this much? There are different reasons for that. First of all, we all know that Akaza is such a greedy person when it comes to power. The only thing matters to him is just getting stronger. To understand his desire to be the strongest, just remember that he even threatened and challenged Upper Moon number 1 in the first episode of season 3. Akaza turned into a demon way sooner than Duma, but suddenly Duma surpassed him and reached a higher rank than Akaza. With this kind of hunger for power, it's obvious that Akaza can't stand the fact someone gets stronger than him in less amount of time. So he hates Duma and do anything to be stronger than him. The other reason is that they have completely opposite desires when it comes to eating human. Akaza refuses to eat any women at any cost. But as we discussed before, Duma's favorite meal is women. And finally, Inosuke. Why does he hate Duma this much? Actually, his hate towards Duma started just in the middle of their fight. Before that, his only reason to fight Duma was his ambitious to be the strongest. But when Duma removed his mask and saw his face, he remembered that Inosuke's mother was in his temple for a while. Duma let her stay and didn't kill her cause she had some talents in singing and also Duma saw her as a stupid person. So Duma didn't kill her and even said that he planned to have her on his side and don't eat her. But after a while, Inosuke's mother Kotoha found out that Duma is killing and eating his worshippers. And after that, she insulted Duma and ran away from temple with baby Inosuke. Duma couldn't stand it and went after her. He cornered Kotoha at a cliff and she knew that the game is over for her. But she decided to throw baby Inosuke into a river and just hope that he would survive somehow and at least have a chance to get away from Duma. When Inosuke found out that Duma is killer of his mom, he became angrier than ever and started fighting him. So this is how Duma added one more enemy to the collection of his worst enemies. So let's move on to an interesting and fun part of the video. We all know that just like his father, Duma's got really a significant desire for women. But at most of the times, it's just to eat and absorb them to get stronger. But surprisingly, there are some people he doesn't see them this way. I'll keep the most interesting one for the last, but let's start with Kotoha, Inosuke's mother. Despite Duma's unstoppable desire to eat gorgeous women, he mentions that he wasn't going to eat Kotoha and there is no doubt that she was so beautiful. So we can say he kinda liked her. It might be hard for you to believe, but there was a time that Duma tried to save a human being. When he saw Gyutaro holding his sister and they're just going to die in few minutes, although he acted like a psychopath, but he felt pity for them and tried to save them by transforming them into a demon. Unlike Akaza who offered any strong person to become a demon, Duma only gave this offer to Gyutaro, so we can guess he really wanted to help him and his sister. We saw how Duma behaved to the others when they tried to fight him. He is always annoying and making fun of them and starts humiliating them. But when he fought Shinobu, he mentions that he really regrets the way his fight with Shinobu's sister, Kanae, ended. They fought so hard and this fight lasted till the sunrise, so Duma had no choice but to escape and Kanae died a little after sunrise cause of her serious injuries just like Donut Hashira Rengoku-sama. Duma really acknowledged her strength during their fight and commended her for it. And let's talk about the person he mentions to be his best friend but it seems he is mocking him. Yeah, you guessed right, you're talking about Akaza. When these two are together, it reminds me to Sanji and Zoro from One Piece. But Akaza and Duma's fights are on another level. I really don't remember to see Zoro and Sanji have ever destroyed each other's jaw and upper head 
just like how Akaza did to Duma. But we never saw Duma fights back, so it's possible that he really sees Akaza as his friend and try to have a close relationship with him. And finally, let's talk about the person you've been waiting for, Shinobu Kocho. Actually, there are two different theories about these two and their relationship. The first theory mentions that Duma doesn't see Shinobu really a match for himself and he can't enter that Shinobu is a sister of former flower Hashira Kanai, whom Duma respected her strength so much so he keep mocking Shinobu and really is humiliating her. But the second theory mentions that Duma really likes Shinobu and the reason he keep mocking her is the same as the reason he behaved like this to Akaza. Which theory do you think is correct? Share your opinion with me in the comments. And finally, let's see how did he die. You should have understood till now that the upper moon number 2 Duma is not a joke and if he uses his full power, he is one of the biggest threats for all of Demon Slayer Corps and even Hashira members. But surprisingly, he was defeated at last. You may ask how? Let me explain. In the last arc of the manga, we see that Duma is busy eating some more women when Shinobu arrives. Only one of the women is still alive and she begged Shinobu to save her. We all know that Shinobu is known to be the fastest Hashira. She runs to the woman and catches her. She asks happily, are you okay? While she hears Duma saying, you sure are fast. Are you a Hashira? So Shinobu is thinking she saved the girl successfully, but suddenly the girl was shattered and covered in blood. Yeah, as always Duma is being a pain in the ass and he is using sarcasm even against the Hashira. Shinobu turns her head after being humiliated like that and when she saw Duma this time, she remembers her sister's last word telling her the demon killed her uses some weapons and the weapons are a pair of sharp pants. So she finds out that Duma is the killer of her sister. After Duma trying to be annoying as always and saying some nonsense, Shinobu gets outraged and telling him, Don't you recognize this Hori? You are the one who killed my sister, right? Now Duma remembers everything and finds out that she is the sister of former flower Hashira that he killed. Suddenly Shinobu attacks Duma and she is able to be fast enough to stab him in the eye. And knowing Shinobu's fighting style that she uses poison, it must be enough enough to say the game is over for Duma. But Duma fall on the ground while saying, this one is a lot stronger than the one you use on Ruikun's mountain. After hearing that, Shinobu remembers her sister's word mentioning poison is a double-edged sword. Because if someone knows about your poison, he or she can counter it using antidote. So she knows that Duma gathered information about her poison and the poison is not going to kill him. I guess it's really obvious that this fight is over, but this time for Shinobu. I mean just think of it. Shinobu is not strong enough to behead any demons, even a subordinate of a lower moon. And now she is facing not only an upper moon, but this bastard is the second strongest one. Actually she overcame her lack of strength with using poison. And that's kinda strong remembering how well it worked in Rui's territory. But Duma knew about her poison and cockily says, Oh, it seems I was able to decompose your poison. Sorry about that. Shinobu tried her best to kill Duma, but after doing some attacks and only being able to do some scratches on him, as I told before, the game was over for our Hashira and Duma defeated her while she was trying her best to kill him. But she lacked the power to finish him off. I mean, god damn it, woman, go to the gym. You are a Hashira. Do you know what does it mean? Why you didn't join Tanjiro and the others while they were working out so hard? So Duma caught her when she attacked him and absorbed her with his crazy power. While he was absorbing Shinobu, her loyal student Kano arrives shouting Master! But it's too late. She hears Shinobu's bones are breaking with the sound of and her swords get out of her hand and fall on the floor. In just a few seconds, Duma absorbs Shinobu completely and now he's ready for Round 2 Fight. Kano saw her master dying right in front of her eyes and she's outraged. So she tries to attack Duma with all of her power. But the moment she tries to slash him with her sword, she doesn't see him anymore. 
Now she knows that she's going to deal with a super fast demon. But as always, Duma starts to be a pain in the ass again. And now he's mocking Kano by saying, But man, it's just a really good night tonight. I get to have one more gorgeous meal after another. It drives Kano crazy and she was thinking in her head, Shut the f*** up! At the same time, Duma hears about that Akaza is defeated than dead. He starts to be annoying again, but Kano isn't going to fall in his trap and let him manipulate her in his mind games. I am the one, the way you so she tries to attack back with words and make him lose his calmness. She said some cruel things one after the other and finished him off with saying, Why were you even bored? This made the most serious. He ends talking and gets ready to fight. He moves as fast as he can and tries to hit Kano with his fans. But she dodges at the last second and also counterattacked him successfully and almost sliced him in half, causing his stomach parts to get out of his body. So Duma understands that Kano is not physically weak like her master and there is no time to fool around. After attacking each other several times, Duma is impressed with Kano's skills and admires her in his mind. He finds out that Kano is predicting each of his moves by watching carefully the movement of his joints and she can fight him equally this way. So he decides to attack her eyes but Kano dodges at the last second again and this time she goes for Duma's neck to finish him off. But we're talking about the second upper move. So nope, it's not going to be that easy. We can see that Kano is much stronger than her master. Just look at how different this fight is. Duma is using almost all of his power and each of his blood demon art techniques. But that's not enough to defeat Kano. Suddenly Duma gets super fast and steals Kano's sword successfully. It seems that she is going to have the same fate as her master. But suddenly the hero of the night, Inosuke Sama, comes out of nowhere. He blocks Duma's finishing move successfully and after seeing number 2 is written in his eyes, he laughs like an idiot as always and saying, If I beat you, I'll become a Hashira. So Inosuke attacks Duma at his max speed. But Duma dodges his attack easily and tries to attack him back with his fan. But because of his insane flexibility, he successfully stops Duma's fan with his foot and jumps back to Kano while showing him his sword and casually saying, Is that yours? I think this is the first time that Duma is humiliated in all of his fights. And Inosuke acts like that was nothing for him. After attacking each other several times, Inosuke tries to attack Duma with a crazy new technique. He dislocated all of his arm joints and performed a long range attack. But unfortunately it wasn't accurate enough to hit Duma's niche. I think Duma is so lucky that Inosuke doesn't watch One Piece. If Inosuke learned about Zoro's crazy long range attacks, he would easily defeat Duma in seconds. Suddenly Duma removes Inosuke's mask and as we know that mask is so valuable for Inosuke. It's comparable to Straw Hat's importance for Luffy. So Inosuke gets angry that Duma touched his treasure. But this isn't going to be the first time that he gets angry in this fight. After Duma sees Inosuke's face, he finds out that he's the son of Kotoha. After Duma told him about his mom and the fact that he is the killer of Inosuke's mother, he gets angry again for the second time. But this time he is outraged and lost focus. So after he attacks Duma, Duma easily hits him so hardly. But Inosuke was lucky that Kano saved him from Duma's finishing move and now she doesn't owe him anymore. Let's get to the point. After these three fought each other for a quite long time, Duma creates some icy clones and these clones are as strong as he and also can perform all of his blood demon art techniques. As he sees that he is defeating Inosuke and Kano with his clones, he decides to escape and go fight other demon slayers. But the moment he touches the door to get out of the room, suddenly his face starts melting down and his eyeball falls. You may be surprised and ask how did it happen? 
It's all thanks to Shirobu and her big sacrifice. But it took her over a year to create the strongest weapon possible to take down Duma. Shinobu knew from the beginning that she is not a match for Duma, but it took her over a year to create the strongest weapon possible to take down Duma. Just like Duma, Shinobu absorbed Vistria poison for more than a year and her entire body was full of poison. She had 37 kilograms of poison within her body and it was 70 times more than enough to kill a demon. So Shinobu's sacrifice pays off and after a long time it finally affected Duma. Shinobu told everything to Kanao before so she understood what's going on and instantly she runs for Duma to use this golden opportunity. At the same time all of Duma's clothes vanished and he falls on the ground. He's shocked and he doesn't know what's going on. Inosuke joins Kanao for the last attack to finish him off but suddenly Duma is inspired by All Might and he goes Even after being poisoned in that massive amount, he uses his strongest blood demon art technique ever for Frost Lily Body Stubble. As I said before, I think it's kind of a copy from Hunter x Hunter anime in which Metro had the same kind of technique. Anyway, both of Kano and Inosuke know that if they retreat to get out of his attack range, they will give Duma enough time to recover from the poison. So Kano decided to use a trump card. The final form of flower breeding style, Scarlet Spider Lily Eyes. Shinobu told her before that there is a high risk of losing her eyesight forever if she uses this technique. But Kano is raised and trained by Shinobu. If her master sacrifices her life to kill an upper moon, there is no doubt that Kano is ready to sacrifice her eyesight. She easily blocked Duma's final attack and reached to Duma in a blink of an eye. Without wasting a second, she goes for Duma's neck. But it seems that Duma's strongest attack is not a joke. The Buddha statue blew some cold air to Kano and she starts being frozen. In this moment, Inosuke tries another crazy attack. He throws both of his swords towards Duma's neck and call it Beast Breathing Style's newest technique, Throwing Slice. While these two blades are coming straight to Duma, was next. This time, Kano is inspired by All Might. She moves her sword, all of her power, and done. They successfully beheaded Duma and the game is over. Duma tries his best to regenerate his head because he knows that there must be a way since both of Muzan and Akaza could do it. But I guess because of the large amount of poison he received after absorbing Shibu, he wasn't able to regenerate his head and he dies by calling himself hopeless and pathetic. <sighs> Wow, it was such a long journey to go through the full story of Opera Number 2 Duma Summer, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'd be so grateful if you liked this video and subscribe to my channel to watch the upcoming videos. Also, I think you will enjoy this video too. So, let's start a new journey being the world of anime.